So now let's look at the third class of roots you can get from linear uh, second order differential equations with constant coefficients. And we're going to do that by investigating the differential equation, the second derivative of y minus 2 times the first derivative plus 5y is equal to 0. And we know by now to test out the solution y is equal to e to the rt. And if we were to do that, we'll get the characteristic equation r squared minus 2r plus 5 is equal to 0. Now, you can't actually, like, factor this, well, that's simply, I should say. So let's try and find the roots by using the quadratic equation. So r is going to be equal to negative b, which in this case is positive 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4 times uh, 5 times 1, so minus 20, all over 2 times 1. So that means that our roots are 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 all over 2. And if you're familiar with complex numbers, you, you know that the square root of negative 16 we can just write as 4i. So if we divide by 2, we can we find that our two roots are 1 plus or minus 2i. So here we have two complex roots that are actually the complex conjugate of each other. But let's see what, how that affects the solution to this differential equation. If we were to plug it into e to the rt, we find that our two solutions are going to be e to the 1 plus 2i, all of that times t, and e to the 1 minus 2i, all of that times t. Now, since they have different exponents, they are linearly independent, which means that our general solution is just this, these individual solutions multiplied by constants and added together. But let's try and see if we can simplify this up a bit, or just free write it in a different form. The first thing we're going to do is let's factor out this t term in the exponent and use our like properties of exponents. And we find that y is equal to a times e to the t times e to the 2i t plus b times e to the t times e to the minus 2i t. Now we can, each term has an e to the t term, so we can factor that out, and we get that y is equal to e to the t times a e to the, it's going to say i times 2t, plus b times e to the negative i times 2t. So here we have two exponentials with imaginary exponents. Now... There should be a red flag raising. You know that when we have an exponent raised to an imaginary exp well, an exponential function with an imaginary exponent, that we can use Euler's formula. And what Euler's formula says in this context is that e to the i times 2t, that is equal to cosine of 2t plus i times sine of 2t. If you're not familiar with Euler's formula, you can check the video in the complex numbers playlist. But uh, it also says that e to the minus i 2t is equal to cosine of 2t minus i times sine of 2t. So we can plug these two exponentials in like their expanded form up in here. So we find that our solution is y is equal to e to the t times, I'm just going to distribute out the a, a times cosine of 2t plus a times i sine 2t. Plus, I'll just rewrite it down here, b times cosine of 2t plus b times negative i sine 
2 t. Now, once again, let's simplify it together by grouping the cosines and the sines together. So we get that y is equal to e to the t times a plus b times cosine of 2t plus i times a minus b times sine of 2t. And what we like to do is we like to simplify it up once more by redefining these constants. Since a is a constant and b is a constant, then a plus b is also a constant value, and a minus b times i is a constant value. An imaginary constant, but a constant nonetheless. So we can redefine it in a more standard form as just e to the t times c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t. Here the i is incorporated into this uh, coefficient here. But there we have it. Here's the general solution in a fairly more intuitive or handy form. So if you have a complex roots to your differential equation, essentially you're gonna have a general solution that's gonna have a exponential function multiplied by sinusoidal term. We can say that in general, if you were to have um, roots r is equal to alpha plus or minus beta i, because they typically come in pairs of complex conjugates, that the general solution for these roots would be y is equal to e to the alpha t times c1 cosine of beta t plus c2 sine of beta t. Same thing, just in more general terms. That way you can plug it in once when you find out what the complex roots are. Now, here we have our solution in terms of sine and cosines, but it, it is possible to rewrite it in a different and equivalent form. Uh, I talked about this in another video, I do believe in the waves and vibrations play, uh, playlist, but you can rewrite a constant times cosine plus a constant times sine in terms of something that like they like to call amplitude phase form, which means you can rewrite the solution. Occasionally you may see it as e to the alpha t times an amplitude, I'm just going to say a, cosine of omega t minus a phase phi, or you may see it as just e is equal to alpha t times a sine of omega t, whoops, plus a phase phi. Now, in this case, our two arbitrary coefficients were c1 and c2. And in this case, our two arbitrary coefficients are a and our phase delta. So, these are just two other things that you might see occasionally. I just want to introduce this to you, not to confuse you, but just to make sure that if you were to see it, that you wouldn't be too scared. But this is probably one of the more common forms you will see it in. And that's pretty much how you uh, find like the general solution for complex roots. So with that, I'll hopefully see you in the next video.